Hi, in today's lecture, we are going to study how to analyze recursive algorithms. First, we will see recursive factorial algorithm, how to analyze it, followed by recursive Fibonacci algorithm to analyze them. Starting with factorial, simply factorial of a number or any integer is given as zeros factorial is 1, 1 factorial is also 1, 2 factorial is 2 into 1, that 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1, 4 factorial is 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Similarly, n factorial is given as n into n minus 1 factorial. So, for all values of n that is greater than or is equal to 2, n factorial is n into n minus 1 factorial. And for n is equal to 0 or 1, value is equal to 1. Let us see how to solve factorial problem recursively. So, factorial of n is calculated or take an input value n which is a non-negative integer and it returns factorial of value n. It first checks whether number is lesser than 2 or not. That means whether number is 0 or number is 1. If that is the case, then we have to return our factorial or final answer as 1. So, if n is lesser than 2, return directly value 1. But if that is not the case, we have to call factorial function recursively by multiply its result with n and complete result must be returned. So, the statement will be return n into factorial of n minus 1. So, in this case, Factorial of n minus 1 is a recursive statement which is calling an algorithm itself with a parameter n minus 1 instead of n. So, this is the algorithm of factorial in a recursive fashion. Now, this recursive factorial is having the only basic operation that is multiplication which is inside the else statement return side. To calculate factorial of n, we need to call fact of n minus 1 and multiply it with value n. So, in, to, in order to calculate fact of n, how many times this multiplication would be called? The multiplication operation would be called n minus 1 times for fact of n and one more time to multiply its result with n. So, this will be t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus 1. To calculate factorial of n, we require the steps required to calculate factorial of n minus 1 plus one more step to multiply the result with n. So, this is our recurrence relation. Now, what is our initial condition or a base case? So, when n is lesser than 2, that means when n is 0 or when n is 1, we directly calculate our answer as 1 and return that value. So, only one step is required. That's why we say t of 0 and t of 1 is equal to 1. So, that is our initial condition or base case. Now, with the help of this recurrence relation and initial condition, we have to find out its complexity. So, let us start with that. T of n is equal to T of n minus 1 plus 1 for all n greater than 2. And for T of 0 and T of 1, it is, is equal to 1. So, we will here use backward substitution method. You can directly use forward substitution or any other master or tree method. Whatever you are convenient with. So, here I have used backward substitution method. So, instead of t of n minus 1, I am going to make it substitution with the help of t of n minus 2. So, t of n minus 1 is now substituted as t of n minus 2 plus 1. So, my original equation t of n is now t of n minus 2 plus 1 plus 1. Similarly, t of n minus 2 substitution will be t of n minus 3 plus 1. 
So my final equation t of n is now t of n minus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 3 times. So I must write it as t of n minus 3 my plus 3. Similar way if I keep on substituting I will get my generalized term as t of n is equal to t of n minus k plus k. Now to get or to solve this particular equation, I must take my t term as my base term. So in this case, I can either put or I can either bring down t of n minus k to 0 or t of n minus k to 1. Let me choose the first option. That means I will try to substitute n minus k as 0. So my first t term would be now t of 0. So, I will put down n minus k as 0 in my above term, equation number 1. So, now this would be n is equal to k. So, t of n is now t of 0 plus n. Because n minus k is 0, so n will become k. So, this is, is equal to 1 plus n. Because t of 0's value in a base case or initial condition is 1 substituted. So, my equation is now t of n is equal to 1 plus n. Now, the equation is in simplest polynomial form. I can directly write its complexity is big O of n or simply theta of n. Now, let us see Fibonacci series. How Fibonacci recursively works. So, basically Fibonacci is calculated as for 0th length it is 0. For one value it is 1. Now these two values are called as seed values. To calculate Fibonacci of 2, we have to add its two previous term. Similarly for 3, it would be 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. For similarly for 4, it would be 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. For 5, it would be 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. For 6, it would be 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 and so on. That means, if my Fibonacci of n is going to get calculated, I must first check whether it is greater than 2 or lesser than 2. If it is lesser than 2, then n is the value itself, the answer of Fibonacci. Because Fibonacci of 0 is 0 and Fibonacci of 1 is 1. So inside Fibonacci of n, first we are going to check if n is lesser than 2 or not. If n is lesser than 2, then we have to return the result n itself. So we will write return n inside first if statement. But if n is greater than 2, we must calculate Fibonacci of n minus 1 and Fibonacci of n minus 2. That means Fibonacci of previous two steps. And add them so that the final result will be calculated. And that added final result will be returned as the answer to Fibonacci of n. So inside L statement, we have Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2, which is returned by return statement. So this is our recursive Fibonacci method. Now, in this recursive Fibonacci method, to calculate Fibonacci of n, we also need to calculate Fibonacci of n minus 1 and as well as Fibonacci of n minus 2. So, the steps required to calculate Fib of n is steps for calculating n minus 1 Fibonacci plus steps required to calculate n minus 2 Fibonacci. That's why we call t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 plus 1 extra statement is also required to add these two separate result that is Fibonacci of n minus 1 which is added with Fibonacci of n minus 2 so addition of these two statement is considered as a third operation which is added as plus 1 in our recurrence relation Similarly, for n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1, we get an answer directly by return statement of n. That is only one step to calculate its result. That is t of 0 is equal to 1 and t of 1 is also is equal to 1. So we will start recursively find out Fibonacci as t 
t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 plus 1. Now, here one assumption is made that let us assume t of n minus 2 is approximately t of n minus 1 plus 1. That means previous value, only one is added, only one operation is performed, so they are approximately equal. So with this consideration on an approximation, we continue our substitution. So my final equation will look like t of n my 2 t of n minus 1 plus 2. And with the help of backward substitution method, we have obtained a generalized term as t of k t of n is equal to 2 t of n minus 1 plus 2. So instead of n, we have substituted n minus 1 and we keep on repeating the step. We get 8 t of n minus 3 plus 14, which is, is equal to 2 into 2 raised to k minus 2. So generalized term here is 2 raised to k into t of n minus k plus 2 into 2 raised to k minus 2. So here let us substitute n minus k as 0 to achieve our base k. Into So n minus k is substituted as 0. So n will become is equal to k. Now these substitutions are made in our equation number 1 which is just our derived equation. This will be now 2 raised to n into 2 t of 0 plus 2 into 2 raised to n minus 2. The equation will be now t of n is equal to 2 raised to n plus 2 into 2 raised to n minus 2. So this is our simplest term of an equation from which I can directly write the complexity of an algorithm is big O of 2 raised to n. That is also is equal to theta of 2 raised to n. So the complexity of recursive factorial Fibonacci algorithm is big O or big theta of 2 raised to n. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing out.